Welcome to another episode of Life and Whiskey. As always, I'm Jordan, and today we're getting back into one of my favorite categories. We're going to explore a rye. So this is Rittenhouse Rye, and here in Wyoming, I can pick up a bottle of Rittenhouse for $18.19, so we're not breaking the bank. Again, kind of on the cheaper side of rye whiskeys. Um, it is coming in at... 100 proof or 50 percent abv um so a little bit higher proof a lot of ryes are somewhere in that 90 90 proof um and it's distilled and bottled by heaven hill distillery incorporated louisville kentucky or in bardstown kentucky so they got a couple of different distilleries um but uh yeah rittenhouse rye so as any of you've watched this channel at all, you'll know I'm kind of a fan of rye whiskey. Um, I like the many, many places you can go. Now, right now, MGP seems to be dominating the the whiskey market, whether it's bourbon or rye, but rye especially because even the big name brands, um, because of the big rye boom that we've seen, the hipsters. Uh, in the last five years, um, most of the big name brands had not been making rye whiskey. And so, you know, they typically do that four year um, barreling aged. And so because of that, they didn't have anything on stock. So a lot of the big names went to um, MGP. So the large flavor profile that you see out there right now is MGP rye. Uh, it might be aged in different areas, and they might have done something different to it, or put, or a slightly different recipe, or um, a different proof. But for the most part, well over fifty percent of all the rye on the shelf is MGP. Um, so it's kind of nice to see something that is not, uh, and hopefully we get a little bit different um, profile out of it because of that. Um, which you most certainly do. Kind of interesting. Uh, I get a little bit of almost corn dust out of it. Some kind of grain dust. I get a very herbal floral note to it. Now herbal is something that you definitely pick out or get from a lot of rye. So you normally get herbal, floral, black licorice. Um, just kind of a spicy peppery note as well. Uh, that's more in the flavor than in the nose. I get a little vanilla and caramel in there. Just a touch of oak with ethanol. And that's not surprising, 100 proof. So this is one that at 100 proof, you would expect the ethanol to be a little bit more forward, and it's really not. It's kind of hidden in there a little bit, um, not dominating the nose, which is kind of nice. Now, I just got done doing an Elijah Craig barrel proof at 127 proof. A lot more alcohol in there, but I explained that just because it's a high proof doesn't always mean that the ethanol dominates. In this particular rye, the ethanol is definitely not dominating the flavor profile. You actually get a lot of different flavors, and only at the tail end do you get the ethanol burn in the back of your throat and a little bit of the dryness on your tongue. Um, a lot of sweet notes are in there, which is um, very different than the nose. So to start with, I get that herbal component, a little bit of baking spice, like a, like a clove maybe, then a vanilla caramel in there, um, and then it picks up this oak characteristic uh, that it kind of finishes with an oak and a vanilla sweetness underlaying with the dryness of the ethanol, maybe a black pepper spice to it. Um, one characteristic that you might get out of a rye that's pretty common, especially in MGP products, is like a eucalyptus. So um, like if you watch the Whiskey Vault guys, they talk about this a lot. Like if you go into Pier 1 or um, any one of those... Um, I don't know what you want to call it, 
not a flower shop, but like the place where you can get like fake flowers and like the craft section of a Benjamin, you know, go to a Benjamin Franklin or or, or the craft section of Walmart or any craft store, and you go to the area where the fake flowers are, and you can get the eucalyptus. And if you smell that eucalyptus, it has a very distinct smell to it. Oftentimes, um, you can get that out of the glass, along with this herbal quality. Um, and I definitely, if you try really hard, you can get this the eucalyptus in the nose, but you get it on the flavor. So, and what I mean by that is it tastes like the smell in the back of your mouth, um, along with that herbal quality. So... Just a really nice flavor profile. The ethanol's not dominating or burning or anything like that. Um, a good sipper, I would say. So Rittenhouse Rye, not over the top expensive. $18.19 here in Wyoming. I mean, that's pretty awesome for that. Uh, highly recommended. It's not an MGP product, so um, something a little bit different. So <clears throat> there's our whiskey for today. This will be hopefully a little bit shorter video. I just want to talk about something that I discovered on our very first elk hunting trip this year. So um, this is what I use for uh, carrying my elk calls with me, my mouth calls. It's just a plastic case that uh, some, whoa, that, that some uh, elk calls came in. So these are what I carry my mouth reeds in. And the, it'll hold three reeds. And... Um, there you go. So, so there you go. And that was a really poor demonstration of mouth calls. But I got three reads in there. And what I did this year was I explained earlier in one of my videos that I always carry an expandable broadhead with me that I use for grouse. And... I shot the very first grouse I shot this year with it. I'm going to pat myself on the back. It was an awesome shot. It was only like 12 or 13 yards, not very far. But I was standing on a log about waist high off the ground balancing as I was shooting. So I'm like standing forward and trying to shoot at the same time. And I caught that sucker right in the neck with that expandable. and just I almost took his head clean off. It was a pretty good shot. Quite proud of that one. Um... And uh, what happened was my arrow then, you know, like passed through this thing. And it took like, I don't know, 45 minutes to find my arrow maybe. And, you know, we're looking at this spot. And we're like, it has to be right here. And we're uh, digging through the ground and digging through like it hit a, a it was in a, a log pile of logs that several of the logs were old and rotten and stuff. And I'm like, man, that sucker could have buried all the way through there. And, uh, and the guy I was with was like, man, this is why I always use judo points. And I had never shot an animal with the judo points. So I will be completely honest here. I'm an idiot. I thought that the judo point, oh, let me back up. All right, we'll keep going with that. I thought the judo point just like hit the animal, like broke a bone and then kind of stun the animal, or a shock wave would rip through the animal and kind of kill the animal through shock. That's what I thought the judo points did. And so I always was adverse to using the judo points, and that's why I opted to have that expandable broadhead. Because, as I explained in my other video, not only do you have this broadhead for a grouse, but if that's the last arrow in your quiver, you now have a lethal arrow to use on an animal, on an elk, for a final shot if you need it. Um, well, after losing that arrow, we finally found it. We found it when my buddy stepped on it, snapped my arrow in half. Um, but I was just happy we recovered it. Uh, he goes, well, this is why I use my judo points. You want to try some? I said, no, 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 I got some. Um, so for those who are not familiar with a judo point, this is what a judo point looks like. And it's a blunt point with these spring-loaded prongs on it. And uh, his, so like you can see mine here has a really flat, blunt point. His actually has more of a pointed 
portion to it. It's probably half as big in diameter as that. Now this is only a hundred and a hundred grain head, whereas I shoot 125 grain heads. Um, that point difference makes a little bit of difference as to the left right of where your arrow shoots, but all of my shots were under 20 yards, so it didn't really matter. Um, so then, so, you know, he's like, well, you want to try a judo point? I said, no, I got one. So I, I screwed this back on. And the reason why I brought this case up is I took the expandable then and stuffed it in this case along with my reeds. So I still had that point with me where I could unscrew this, put my, my broad head on it, that expandable, if I needed it. And because it has a flatter profile to it it fit in this case really really well whereas a, a standard broadhead would not have fit in here so that's the whole point of bringing that up um so i still carried that point with me but i switched to this and then i shot i think two or three more grouse with one of these and i will say if you've never shot a judo point forget the broadhead unless you want to do what i do and carry it with you out into the field this judo point is wicked on small game it you would think that something that is blunt like that would just smoke something and stop. No, it literally rips right through the animal. So <laughs> they're lethal as all get out. I shot two more grouse and a squirrel with it. Complete pass-throughs. Uh, I would have never expected it if you had told me that. I, I would have said you were lying. I did not think that this thing would just rip right through an animal. But man... The grouse I shot with this, it was just like one and done. Boom. They're right there. The squirrel I shot, I hit the squirrel right behind the head, right in the neck, and it just ripped right through it, ripped him right off the, the log he was sitting on. Um, I mean, it just, it was impressive. It was very, very impressive and unexpected. Um, so, uh, change in thought philosophy. Um, I will now be shooting these judo points now and for forever at grouse and then i will be carrying that expandable in here just because i like to have that you know i got a five arrow quiver and i just want to have that extra broadhead in there just in case because you never know so that's what i wanted to talk about today judo points if you've never used them definitely give them a try they are wicked on small game. They will definitely do the trick on any grouse, rabbit, squirrel, uh, woodchuck, porcupine, <clears throat> whatever it is. These will do the trick on a thin-skinned animal, no doubt. Um, so give them a try. Carry one in your quiver. So I got my broadheads all tucked away already, but um, you know I always carry it as my last arrow in my quiver. Uh, my quiver's nothing fancy. This is the quiver that came as part of the packaged bow that I bought. So I bought that Bowtech Assassin package back in 2013. And um, you know what? I've upgraded the, the site and I've upgraded the rest and that's it. I still got the sling. I still got the quiver, um, you know, and the bow still shoots awesome. So there you go. So there's that. That's uh, today's discussion. Judo points. Check them out for small game. They're absolutely lethal. Uh, they're really effective, and it's a lot of fun. Um, and, man, if you haven't ever shot a grouse, you are missing out. Because, uh, we, like I said in one of my previous videos, that first week, one of the days we came back to camp with three grouse. The three of us sat a little olive oil in a fry pan on the grill, fried them up, a little Tony Sachery seasoning on there, and, oh, my gosh, living like kings. Like, <laughs> honestly, going from that day forward... Everybody was more uh, amped up and, like, on edge trying to find a grouse and getting a, sh a shot opportunity on a grouse than they were for the elk. Because the elk hunting was, was difficult enough, right? Like, we're hopping over logs and we're hiking five, six miles each day up and down the ridge and not getting any bugles and things are not going quite the way I had, you know, set up the expectation because I told everyone, like, oh, yeah, the elk do this, and we'll hear it, and it'll be great, and blah, blah, blah. And none of the stuff came to fruition that I was expecting. Um, but the grouse, man, we were <laughs> we were bumping grouse every now and again here and there, and we really went after it. And, man, if you've never done it, you're missing out. It's a good test of skill, 
and it's a great reward for uh for the pot when you get back to camp that night so um go give it a try i also encourage you go get a bottle of rittenhouse rye 100 proof it's pretty awesome as far as ryes go um it has a bunch of characteristics of traditional rye and then it has a little bit of that sweetness and a little bit of oak that you don't get out of a lot of the mgp products and stuff but uh really really good rye and um you're not breaking the bank as your sub twenty dollars um which there aren't a ton of ryes out there that are sub twenty dollars so for that price go out there check it out drop in the comments down below what you can pick up a bottle of rittenhouse for in your area um also like and subscribe to the channel or dislike whatever you want um, any interaction with the video would be great. It would help boost my content a little bit in the YouTube algorithms. Um, share this video. Uh, that's another thing. Um, I got maybe, I only got like 20 something subscribers right now. So if you like this comment or if you know, comment, if you like this video and content or you know somebody who might, please share this. Uh, I'm no longer on Facebook. I got rid of that BS earlier this year, July 4th. Um, I refuse to take part in that. I'm also available on minds.com at life underscore and underscore whiskey. Um, I put all these videos up on minds as well. Um, and someday in the future here, I'm probably going to start a bit shoot account. That's B I T C H U T E. It's basically a YouTube alternative since YouTube is owned by Google. Um, you know, just anything to get away from the, the giant corporate alphabet overlords. Um, they're doing a lot of really shisty stuff with your information and how much information they're stealing from you and what they do with it and who it's available to. And I'm not a personal fan of that. Um, but YouTube definitely allows you to make more money than any of the alternatives. And at this point, I'm not making any money on this. Um, I have not reached a threshold yet i think you need about 100 subscribers before you can monetize something um so once i reach that threshold i will and do plan to monetize my videos i'm still not going to be making more than probably five or ten dollars a month but you know it's something and um those alternative sites just don't have that uh, monetary ability at the same level that YouTube does at the moment. So I'm um, still going to be using YouTube, but I like the alternative tech platforms. Um, and I, like I said, I got rid of Facebook. One of the best things I ever did. I never was a Twitter person. There is an alternative to Twitter. I don't remember what that is. Um, the nice thing about all those, all those alternatives is they're open source. Um, there's no overlord telling you what you can and can't say, you're not going to get um, booted off or censored at all. Uh, so all that stuff is kind of nice. And so that's the direction I'm going to be moving. But for now, um, YouTube's kind of where it's at and minds.com. Go ahead and check it out. And uh, yeah, life and whiskey as always. So thank you for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I will catch you guys in the next video.